Hi guys, welcome to Viking Ventures. I'm Wiggles the Fluffy, aka Chris, and I wanted to do a little video about how to pair your bike for touring and basically what to expect when you tour. So I'm going to do this little video um, about what you can expect, um, things to look out for on your bike, things to check before you go, um, passports, MOTs, tax, pretty much everything that you need to get your bike sorted out and ready for going off adventuring into Europe. So I'll catch up with you in the garage. Hi guys, right well you meet me in the garage, this is where all the action happens. Um, so basically to get started I have a BMW R1200GS which is featured in a few of the other videos that we have. Um, so I'm basically just going to go over in, in quite some detail as to what you need to look out for. Just make sure the cup of tea stays straight. Um, when you're looking at taking your bike for the first time into Europe. So the first things first is getting your legal documentation and stuff sorted out. So firstly you'll need um, a valid passport, um, obviously a valid driving license always check with your insurers to make sure that they can um, provide cover for you going into Europe so just make sure that you are covered for that um, you don't need to have a green card or anything like that not that I'm aware of um, I know that there was a certain point where you did need a green card um, but I would just get like the paper version of your insur your insurance certificate just to just so if any you know you do get stopped so you've always got proof that you are insured basically um and also you're going to need proof of tax um and i never knew this the last i went so lucky enough i didn't get stopped but you need to have your mot certificate as well even if you're riding in countries where you don't actually need um, an mot certificate to ride a motorbike um, also as well is the UK sticker on the back, it can't say GB, it's got to say UK. Um, so with that, that's pretty much all of your documentation out of the way, it's really easy to get hold of if you need it. Um, I had a bit of a problem getting my insurance certificate because I have all three bikes, this one, the Monster and the HB4 all with debits and they kept sending me the wrong bike when I was asking for this one so uh, yeah that took a little bit of a that took a little bit of time so moving on the actual bike itself um, I wouldn't really recommend if you can help it taking panniers or top boxes or anything which is going to add unnecessary weight to your bike um, reason for that being is is when me and the wife did the NC500 video um, the bike was fully laden with obviously me and her. I mean, she weighs as much as a as a wet fart to be honest. But the all the boxes plus me and her on the bike, it was just yeah unbearable. It was really really heavy, really unbalanced. Um, felt like all the weight was literally just fixated on the back wheel. It was just yeah, it wasn't nice. So if you can help it. I would use something like a 50 litre roll bag and a rucksack or something like that. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't use panniers or anything of the sort. Too big and bulky and heavy and it just takes away, you know, the actual riding experience. You know, because when we go touring and stuff, you know, you still want to have fun. So, yeah, I do have the rail for the 55 litre Givy top box. Um, that's now just been put in a cupboard and just left there because it's just an absolute pain in the ass. Um, and then, yeah, I just use a 50 litre, is it 50 litre um, Oxford rain seal bag. Um, I think that's more than enough space to hold all of the stuff that you're possibly going to need. And then obviously I have like my Krieger rucksack, um, like a little fanny pack thing you know, to put like your passports or your, or your you know, important information so it's kept on you at all times. Um, so yeah, moving away from the top boxes and panniers because they're unnecessary um, is making sure that your bike is in tip top condition. Um, you know, you service it regularly. Um, I service my bike myself. I don't trust BMW to do a good job. Um, I've had lots of issues with BMW with this and with that. 
absolute bane of my life that bike has been but yeah that's another story for another day um, yeah so engine oil um, filter check your plugs check your filter brake pads obviously that's a massive thing make sure you've got nice new fresh pads um, and as well depending on the mileage that you're doing I'd recommend brand new tires irrespective of where you're going because um, you know, the last thing that you want on your trip is to literally you know been having loads of fun and you end up having an accident or you know you end up getting stopped and they check you and you, you know if you're not 100 percent on what the minimum depths are for tire tread and things like that in different countries it just it alleviates all the asshole to just get new tires just makes perfect sense um but yeah other than that just making sure that your bike's you know well looked after reliable um you know that's, that's the last thing you want to be worrying about is whether or not your bike's going to let you down but um looking onto a few other little gadgety things that i use um is the quad lock for my phone because i don't use like a proper sat nav because i think they're crap um and the usb uh, adapter for the front of the gs is a must because you can literally you can charge everything like i charge all my cameras off of it i charge my phone off of it um yeah it is and and, and one of those um mobile power banks you know so if you do have anything like that you can charge everything up off of your bike you know you're not waiting around for stuff um and the reason why i use a proper um phone you know mount instead of using a proper uh, sat nav is because i found on loads of different occasions if you're riding around and just say you see something that you like you have to then if you've got no you know like information as to where it is that you actually want to go or anything you're literally just doing it on the fly then you're probably going to need addresses obviously to put into the sound whereas on your phone it's just a simple case of just you know pulling it out googling where it is that you want to go and then just getting directions for it it's easy um so yeah that's 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 kind of like the basics um as to what you want to be looking for and what you want on your bike because you don't need unnecessary weight you don't need unnecessary items on your bike ruining your experience for you just because you've got a gs doesn't mean that you've got about you know absolutely laden it with weight and panniers and boxes and fucking stuff coming off of it all over the place it's just ridiculous and as well the amount of people who say that i'm too young to own a gs is ridiculous I think it's just because old people are usually the only people who have saved up long enough to afford such a bike to be honest but you know I've had I've had a few bits of trouble but a bit of hassle with it but other than that it's 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 been a good bike you know it handles really well it's nice and light when you're on it um fuel efficiency is actually really good um on one of the last videos we went to Austria went to, took it to the Nürburgring and it's uh you know, and it, it's, it's done well. It's done well, and this is a brand new tyre before I left. Um, but no, it was really, really good crack. It's good experience. But um, yeah, so if you know, if, if you're looking to go on your first bike trip into Europe, I just wouldn't. Don't, 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 don't think about it. Just pack a bag, get your rucksack, and just go. You don't even need to forward book. You've, I mean, everybody's got the what Airbnb and um what's the other one uh, booking.com or whatever you know on your phone and it's just a simple case of just you know just looking you know roughly where it is that you want to stay and then just, just booking it and if you can um just 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 take a tent with you you know and just um, and then just pitch up for the night it's um you know i fell into like this um this ridiculous um time frame where i was literally just googling excuse me everything online to see what it was I needed, where I could possibly stay. Um, and it was just, it was so easy. It was just so easy. I couldn't believe how easy it was. You literally book your train, get on the train, get off at the other side and ride your bike. That's it. And then we literally just, we, we had a rough idea as to where it was that we wanted to go. We went there. If there's any problems, we found somewhere else. Um, it just alleviated the whole stress of just trying to book like the the ultimate biking experience when the best biking experiences are the ones that you don't ever forward plan they literally they just come out of nowhere so the, the best advice that i could give to you is to get your bike in tip-top shape um and literally just get on it book your train and then just get gone because 
you, you'll, 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 you'll spend a lot of your days worrying about you know where you're going, what route you should take, what's the best roads, um, is there enough fuel stations? Um, I mean, I had all of these same worries. What paperwork will I need? Um, there's lots and lots and lots of things that you can try and possibly consider, you know, when when you're doing stuff like that. But yeah, all in all, I think um, yeah, biking's supposed to be a pleasurable experience. So make it as pleasurable as possible, and don't overthink these things. Um, but Aye, right, well, that's that said. So we may as well have a look at the bike since we're here. Um, this is my 2001 Ducati Monster S4. Um, that's my absolute pride and joy, this bike. Um, absolutely love it. One of the best sounding machines that you'll ever hear. Um, absolutely stunning. Bit of a pain in the ass to ride sometimes, especially when it's cold. Doesn't like, doesn't like it at all. And then my 2013 BMW HP4 Carbon Edition. Um, this has had thousands spent on this bike, and I mean thousands. It is absolutely immaculate. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love this bike. It's just, uh, yeah, I just don't get many opportunities to ride it these days <laughs> um, and that's the missus that's the wife's SV650S um, she's had that for about a year now brought it from a company down south and they said it was absolutely in tip top condition ready to ride yeah okay note to self don't buy a bike without seeing it first it was absolutely nasty um, spent a couple of grand doing that up to get it to the point where she could actually use it. But, um, aye, so yeah, hopefully I've covered, you know, a lot of things that people worry about. Um, you know, if there's anything else you know, that you can possibly think of that I haven't thought of, um, might be worth a good mention. Um, I think one thing that I do want to mention is that if you ride in a party of people, is to make sure that you all have intercoms, um, because there's nothing more boring on a on a you know on a on a decent bike run. You know, if you're going into France or Germany, Austria, Slovenia, Italy, whatever it is, or wherever it is that you're going, um, you need to be able to have that crack with the people that you're riding with. Um, otherwise, it will get very boring indeed. And then if you get lost, and you know, it just makes things a hell of a lot easier. So, yeah. Um, clothing wise um, I think would be another thing to mention don't overthink it simple if you're going in winter take waterproofs you know it doesn't matter if you're wearing jeans underneath or a t-shirt jumper just ride within your means clothe within your means you know so if you know you're going into a colder environment take some stuff it's not really rocket science is it um, you know it's, it's quite simple a couple of decent pairs of gloves um, decent tent, you know, um, sleeping bag, you know, which is rated for whatever temperature it is that you're going into. Um, yeah, decent boots. Obviously, cause you're going to be you, you're going to be in them for hours and hours and hours, you know, every day. So it makes sense to take you know the best of the best stuff that you can, you know, the best stuff for you that you can get hold of. Um, I just think there's too many um, touring videos out there where people don't actually um, explain to you just how easy it is. For you to do these things i know it's, if you go into into switzerland or whatever you need this swiss vig, uh, vignette but you can as, you, as when, when you when you cross the border into switzerland you can literally just go to the nearest garage and get like a, a swiss vignette i think it's like well 20 odd quid um you just stick it onto the front screen of your bike i mean it can go it can go anywhere um as long as it's on the front of your bike um and obviously then you've got the um yeah, speeding in Switzerland is hellish. You've got to really, really behave yourself. Um, obviously, I like to have a little bit of fun on my bike because I'm not boring. Um, but yeah, it is just a simple case of just figure out where it is you want to go, figure out what it is that you want to do. I think that's probably the hardest part about this. And then just literally just get on your bike and just go in. Um, yeah, as I say, it's not rocket science. It really is that easy. But um, yeah, so if, as I say, if I've forgotten anything, um, you know, or if you want to add anything to this, you know, just leave a comment down below, you know, and other people will see it. Um, 
but yeah thanks very much for watching um and uh yeah ride safe